Mary Peacock with Let's Move with Mary podcast. I think this is podcast, what, number three? Four. Four. We're on four. Four. And I'm here with Etch. Uh, how's it going, Etch? Doing good. Doing good. So this episode, we're going to talk about why now is a good time to sell with the low inventory. Because, I mean, we've had low inventory for probably about two, three years now. And we don't see it increasing anytime soon. So it's still driving the housing prices up. And then, but of course, we all know the interest rates just went up to what some of them were hovering seven, eight percent, depending on your credit score, of even course. With but with that being said, even with the inventory, you still want to, now it's time a good, still a good time to sell because there's still buyers out there looking to buy a home. That that six seven percent is not bothering them. They know that the housing prices are going to just increase because if the interest rates do go down, I think we've talked about this before. The housing prices are going to go up. So I mean, it's a supply and demand. It's always that way. So it's always a good time to sell. Right now is a good time to sell. Um, I heard you got some traffic on your house. Yeah, as soon as the rates dropped, there was just like, and I was like, whoa, hey, that was great. So yeah. perfect. So I'm hoping we have a showing coming up here, and I'm hoping that everything turns out good. But, you know, we got a couple of days to, to prep for it, and uh, I'm going to be looking at every little thing right now to be like, is that right? Is this right? Is that right? Oh, I see a little paint off there. I'm going to touch that up. Because paint's my big thing. Like, I'll look in and I'll be like, mm, nope, that needs to be redone. I need to fix that. Oh, so that doesn't look good. So, as a seller, what are you doing? I mean, I mean, it sounds like you're walking through your house and kind of taking your seller cap off, put your buyer cap on, like, hey, what is it that I would want to see if I was going to look yep. at buying this house again? So, what does that look like for you? For me, it ends up being looking around at any type of major, because I mean, it's so easy to get into a a routine of overthinking, overlooking things that are like the simple things. You overlook the simple things that really will do probably the most amount of good for you. And you focus on the big project because you're like, I don't like that. Now, see, we've lived in our house for like, what, five years. So I know all of the things that I don't like about it that I want changed, Mm -hmm. as opposed to some other people might be like, I have no problem with that. So I look at all those things. My wife, on the other hand, she's like, no one cares about that. Stop. You're wasting her time. Clean up. That's all that needs to be done. I'm like, no, that's got to be done. So, I mean, I look at things like uh, if there's, uh, for instance, at one point we had a um, uh, medicine cabinet that was up on the wall. It was one of those uh, just, you know, builder specials that oh, you yeah. can find anywhere. The three mirrors that, you know, yep. they're all over the place. So this one, the back of it is, was warped. So it's kind of hanging off the wall about, I would say, a quarter inch to a half an inch. Oh, now, that's quite a bit. Yeah. Some people would just be like, oh, I don't like that anyway. I want to get a new, you know, vanity in. Or put a new mirror in or whatever. Right, just a mirror or something like that. But then there's me who's going, all right, we should probably replace this wall. (laughs) 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 Because it's, I mean, that's that's where my mind goes. I go for the big grand ice things, you know, where it's like. There's a lot of sellers that do that. Like. But stop and think about it. Kitchen, we know the two things that sell, Mm -hmm. kitchens and baths, right? So look at the kitchen, look at the bath. Is there anything that you can do that's inexpensive? Because, hey, you might pick out this beautiful granite that's $30,000, but is it going to appeal to the masses of the buyers that you're trying to attract? You know? Some people may not like that black granite. It shows everything. Some people might not like white granite because if it you put cherry juice on it or something yeah. and it stains, you know. Um, or maybe they don't like granite at all. They prefer, you know, corian or whatever. So what can you do to make the biggest impact? And I get that question a lot. Mm-hmm. And one thing is paint. Yep. It's the least expensive and it has the biggest impact. I've gone through a lot of houses that, I mean, I love color. I love yellow. I love red. I love all those. I've had them in my house. But they don't appeal to the masses of buyers. And a lot of sellers are like, well, it's just paint, right? No big deal. I'll give them a paint credit. Believe it or not, a lot of people can't see past that. Like, oh, my gosh, did you see that red wall? 
Like, yeah. oh, I can't do that. And even though they know it, just one wall, and it might cost you what thirty bucks for a gallon of paint, and the red wall's gone. <laughs> but that's my biggest advice: is if you see something like that, or um, how many times have you opened up a door? I think we told, talked about this too, and the doorknob goes into the drywall just a little bit yeah. because it doesn't have that doorstop on yep. there. Just those little things. Go put a doorstop on there to cover that up, you mm-hmm. know, or if the cabinet isn't closing just right and the hinge is all you know wonky go put a new hinge on it all of this stuff is you can do that for not much money at all and make the biggest impact on the sale of the house yeah i think paint you hit the the nail on the head with that one our daughter one i mean she's wanted in the worst way she loves space. She wants things all dark and spacey looking and, oh, I could make a galaxy on this wall and these kind of things. Well, our her playroom that she never has utilized, it's basically her closet now and basically the cat's eating area. <laughs> but it used to be a really dark, deep blue, like really deep blue, and she loved it. Well, then we were like, okay, well, we're going to list the house. So we spent... Oh, probably six seven hours painting that thing because it was so dark and putting a gray color over it it was like oh my gosh this is killing me when she saw it when she came back in she's like you ruined it you ruined the room we're like we have to do this because no one's gonna want like the depression room okay <laughs> like no one like this is where you go to sit in your sad feelings we don't want well that. not only that have you noticed how spacious it is now that you lightened it up oh it's huge yeah yeah. Like it doubled just changing the paint. You know what I found, um, and I didn't even think about this until we were watching an Instagram video. Actually, my wife was, and she sent it over to me, and she's like, let's just try this and see what happens. So we tried it in my my bathroom, which is the half bath. Mm-hmm. And it, it, at that point before, it was just kind of very primitive, whatever, until we remodeled everything. But she goes, when you, because I repainted everything, the same colors, everything else, the gray color. She goes, all the floorboards painted the same color as the wall. I was like. It makes a room weird. bigger. It made it look taller. Yeah. And I was like, no way. This is yeah. crazy. What a hack. Because when you think about it, the white, because how often do you go in there? You see gray, white crown molding, white baseboard. Yeah. That's what you see. That's yeah. pretty standard. And people like that contrast a little bit. Mm-hmm. And then you see. It's really strange because of the way that the baseboard is. It does look like a different color, but it just makes it look like it's taller. And we ended up doing it to a few different rooms. And I'm like, this should have been done for the whole thing. Like that, we're not going to go back in and redo it all, but this is outstanding. Like I would have never thought that. And And just that little thing, Mm -hmm. a buyer might be just like what you just said. Wow, I really like this, Mm -hmm. you know, and it took you... No, I mean, we're already painting. So it took me probably an extra half an hour tops just to paint everything and, and, you know, tape on. Because you want to touch up the baseboards anyway. Right, yeah. You know, because of just dirt and dust that gets on it. Clean them up, wash them down, slap a little bit of new paint on them, just freshen them up, make them look good. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, it it did so much for that room and for the rooms that we did it in. And um, I, I absolutely love it. I would have never had thought that that would have been what really did it. But just especially if you have like our our um, house is like 1500 square feet. So it's a smaller house. It was built in the 1920s. So it's going on 100 years old. Rooms weren't super big back then. They didn't need them to be that big, yeah. you know. Yeah. So when you can utilize something like that to make it so that it makes the room look bigger, even though you have a small space, I mean... We haven't had any complaints at all from people who have viewed it. They look at it and the feedback that we got was they staged this really nice. They found, they they put the space to good use is how the realtor put it, that they said, which was like, that's all I could hear. That's what you want to hear. Mm -hmm. Yep, 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 yep. <clears throat> so there's there's so much to be said about all those things. And, you know, you don't think about it when you're ready to just list your house until you start into it. You get a couple of showings and then you get that feedback and you're like, got you. OK, now I'm on it. And then things kind of just trickle effect after that. You know, you yeah. see the little things that you can do. I had a seller just do that. We just actually listed a house up in Reed City 
and the carpet is was probably about four years old mm -hmm. And he just took it upon himself to replace all of the carpet in the house to make it fresh. Um, he, the buyers will be the first ones literally to walk on the carpet because he moved out the day they were putting the carpet in. So, oh. and getting it all cleaned up. But it does make a huge impact, just those little things. Yeah. Um, flooring can be expensive. Carpet is the least expensive than trying to do hardwood floors throughout the, or the vinyl um, throughout the house because vinyl is pretty expensive most buyers do love the vinyl but uh well we have a new house that just sold and it's so funny um story i think i told you a story this morning um the buyer absolutely loves the house loves the layout of the house but her taste was she she came in already painted the whole house even though it was brand new and she wants to tear out the gray oh. vinyl flooring vinyl plank flooring because she doesn't like the gray. <laughs> um, so, see, you just never know. Yeah. That if you're going to spend thousands of dollars on flooring, that buyer just might not like it. And it might be one of those that the buyer's like, oh, my gosh, I don't know if I can handle this gray until I can afford to switch it out. Yeah. You know, so you got to kind of think about that. you got to do it with the masses of people. Um, so, like, for the carpet instance... For the seller, he asked me, he's like, should I put hardwood down because everything else was hardwood? I said, well, you already have carpet there right now. Chances are the buyer is going to probably want to come in and replace the flooring. So I would just go ahead and put carpet to make it look, you know, nice and clean. And uh, it will appeal to most people because everybody's going to come in and put their own personal touch wow. on a house. Yeah. Um, I mean, any brand new house, we're already talking, okay, I'm going to do this, this, and this, even with a brand new house, right? Because, yeah. I mean, you're looking at a brand new yeah. house, yep. and yep. you probably already got plans, like, oh, I, oh my gosh, we're going to do this, it's, that. and <laughs> So many things that we're like, all right, so when we get in, this is what I'm going to do. So, um, you know, if if it all goes to plan, then I have ideas that I'm going to come to the builder with because he's going to finish off the basement for us. Yeah. So I'm going to uh, to ask him for just like little things. Like for instance, down in the basement, I want uh, a projector like up in the ceiling that's already coming down. However, to make it ease of access and it's going to be on the ceiling, I want to run wiring for a hookup down below, almost like a wall outlet so that you can just plug in your Nintendo Switch oh, or your awesome. Xbox yeah. or whatever other kind of aux that you need with just HDMI cables to just plug it in and then boop, you're good to go. You got it so that you don't have to have it hanging from the ceiling or anything like that and just oh, makes it that much easier. Awesome. Yeah, because then, I mean, how often do you get the times where you got, well, kids that want to plug into a video game system or, hey, my friend is coming over and they're bringing their Xbox that we don't have. Oh, I guess I'll have to hook it up. Well, here, plug it into that and it's good to go. Turn it on, turn the projector on done yeah. so all these different little ideas that you know once you have the space to do those things start rolling out and you know it gets exciting but going back into uh the flooring and the carpet and stuff like that um if there's one suggestion that i can give because we just put in new into ours spend the money on the pad <laughs> spend the money on yes the padding. not so much the carpeting mm -hmm. no you can go in the lower grade carpeting yep. but you definitely want to spend and yeah. you don't have to go high-end pad no. Mm -hmm. But you don't want to go the very low path right. either. So that stuff ends up being after like a year or two. I don't care what they say. Oh, no, it lasts for 20 years. It yeah. doesn't last for 20 years. We just <laughs> did that. We had a house that we just renovated, that our last flip house. Yep. And we put carpeting in the bedrooms. And we went with the builder grade carpet, but we were very... Yep animate about the padding we went mid-grade padding mm -hmm. but we did put the vinyl plank throughout the whole house but we did more of the brown neutral colors like mm -hmm. really go with a lot of things um gray was definitely in for a while but i think it's kind of Basically. run it i think it's kind of ran its course yeah i see a lot of colors now are the sage um, oh, I love oh, the sage. Well, that's what we just did those cabinets yep. with with our flip. We did mm -hmm. sage with the gold hardware. Yep. And everybody's like, well, gold is kind of dated, but not anymore. It's wow. actually coming back. I love, like, I saw a vanity, like, sink that was the dark blue with gold handles and all those kinds mm -hmm. of stuff. I was like, oh, 
need it. Need I it. know. So yeah, I'm really loving mm-hmm. the new trend that's coming. Yeah. that's coming out. Um, very. I think I'm gonna call it boho. I guess is that bohemian kind of yeah. vibe. I yeah. guess. I I would go like for me. I go with elegance. Mm-hmm. Because it's like the yeah. gold kind of feel is just kind of like just gold. I don't know. There's something to it, and blue is kind of more regal. So yeah, like, okay, mm. yeah, I it's, like those. It's a little things. royal and elegant yeah. to me, you know. Yeah. Um, I'm everything but those things. <laughs> but I want my guests <laughs> to think that I am. I'm like, hey, look. So a uh, little known fact about me: I like these things. I just don't like to show it. Okay. <laughs> I got to tell you, I was showing a house the other day and I walked into the most pristine house built in the 70s and it still had all of the 70s, like green shade carpet, the orange countertops and the blue sink and tubs and toilet. (laughs) Everything was like a perfect, like nobody ever lived there. It was just absolutely beautiful. And my buyer is like, Oh my goodness, I'm gonna have to rip all this out. But everybody, I'm just going, oh, this is gorgeous. It's so aesthetically pleasing. It's like walking into Graceland. Yes. (laughs) Oh, yes. Yeah. But it's not for everybody. But, you know, that was an estate. And uh, a lot lot of times when you run across buying an estate, they are coming as is, where is. So, but Mm -hmm. this one was. I mean, pristine. Yeah. That's, and that's cool to see, though, that there's still stuff out there that's like that. It's, it's the uniqueness almost that for that buyer may have been like, oh, 